Good evening. My name is Paul Jensen, and I'm here to welcome you to the first installment of the Oneonta Theatre film series, sponsored by the Friends of the Oneonta Theatre. Um, we have scheduled a film each Wednesday, a weekly uh, film, and this particular group for the month of April has the subtitle, One of a Kind. So these are all films that were chosen because we feel they are indeed one of a kind, unlike other films. Uh, as our first uh, film in this grouping, uh, we selected Citizen Kane. Probably a familiar name, very likely a film you've seen, but maybe not. But remember, if you've only seen it at home, you've not really seen it. You need to see it on the large screen, the big theater screen, that it was meant to be shown on, as in the Oneonta Theater. Citizen Kane is a film that in almost every respect is different from the films that went before in Hollywood. It broke almost every pattern. Uh, from the circumstances of the hiring of the creative uh, crew and uh, talent to the end result. One of the reasons it is distinctive is because of its visual style. The look of this film is different than the standard Hollywood look. One reason for that is because Wells didn't know anything about making movies. He didn't know what you're not supposed to do. A cinematographer named Greg Toland, who had worked for many years in Hollywood and was highly respected, in Hollywood, heard about this and contacted Wells and said, I'd like to film this for you. I'd like to shoot this movie for you. Um, why, says Wells, because you don't know what you're doing, because you don't know enough to not ask for something. I want you to challenge me. I want you to challenge the viewers. I want you to challenge the industry uh, typical approaches. And so they got along extremely well together and created a visual style that was extremely distinctive. One that emphasizes what's called long takes, scenes that run for a long time without interruption, without editing, and made considerable use of depth of focus. Things in the foreground, things in the middle ground, things in the far ground, all at the same time. When Wells had arranged for the premiere of the film in 1941, he arranged for it to open without any opening credits. No, not even the logo for RKO. This he couldn't do you know, for the general distribution, but for the opening. So that it would start with a black screen and then the first image of the film would appear. Pay attention to that first image. It, I think it sums up the process and the challenge of all that's going to follow. A second image to think about, to notice and to think about, is in one of the flashbacks of somebody's memory. The last time we ever see Cain. Make a note of the, how that's shown to us, how he's shown to us. Again, in one pictorial gesture. Uh, Wells and Greg Toland, the photographer, have provided us with something that metaphorically encapsulates the essence of Cain's complexity and human complexity in general. So I hope you find this film interesting. I hope you find it satisfying. I know you'll find it to be one of a kind.